All right, Berkey, show me what you got here. A couple bolt ons. Some of that Ford power. A couple bolt ons. This is where you put the quarters in? Yep. And the wind ups in the back. <laughs> 18 bottom end, 100% from Ford. Mm -hmm. 2014 heads, bone stock, non ported, stock cams. The thing it has is head bolts and timing guides to help keep that um, the harmony from the chains rattling the cam gear apart. Um, other than that, if you want to call it closer to stock, I mean, it's, it's all stock components to make power just boost on top. And pretty much all E85 diet? E85, uh, pump E85. Manual trans car. A man after my own heart. Hey, look at that. You got a nice little setup. That's pretty healthy size, man. So that looks like a, that looks like a Borg Warner, huh? Yes, sir. And how big is she? 8087, full custom kit. take on top to uh, tame all that boost temperature look at them big tires oh, you got a four innovations kit too huh yeah. and the best power that this thing has made it was 955 on a full slick qualify that a lot of times we talk about the dyno numbers and we talk about the tire we talk about the gear ratio and all that type of thing but Matt was telling me that that tire in particular was wrapping around the dyno and what that does is that kind of adheres to the dyno more if it had a street tire, it would probably dyno a little bit higher. If, if it was to make 500 naturally aspirated, if you threw 15 at it, it should be pretty close to about 1,000. Well, I that's, made 450 naturally aspirated, so 15, 16 pounds wouldn't be right Okay, around yeah. All right. So a little tip if you guys are ever considering putting a boost on something, you have a 300 horsepower naturally aspirated engine, and you're like, hey, what would that make on 15 pounds? Double it. So 600 wheel is what something would make on a 300 horsepower naturally aspirated setup. Of course, depends on the efficiency of the turbo. Keith will allow, we can throw the street tires on it and see just the, the pickup. <laughs> it should clock close to four digits on a street tire. That's sick. Just the business. <laughs> what do you think it weighs? Uh, last time we had it on the scales, it was 34 something. With nothing out of it. Gotcha. We, and I, I probably pulled like 50 pounds out of this winter, so I mean. Probably 3650 race weight? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to going for a ride here in Pennsylvania. I've heard this car zinging up and down the road and he always leaves very spiritedly. From a few other people that have ridden in it, they've been like, this thing is nasty fast. So in that short little period, temps kind of went up maybe about, I'd say seven degrees. I'm not exactly a thermometer, but uh, it feels like they're a bit warmer than what they were. Now, interesting thing here, Matt is not running a heat exchanger up front. Basically, he has the heat exchanger in the intake manifold and it just goes straight here to the reservoir right there. Now, had he had a heat exchanger up front, like a factory uh, CTSV or a Cobra, that would knock down some of the heat right there. So the shortcoming here is the fact that we are not using outside ambient air in order to cool the heat 
heat exchanging. Basically, all your heat exchanging is done right there. We are taking it out of the intake air charge, but you're not furthermore having that secondary heat knock down there. There he is. Yeah, just put ice in it, but you get super cool temps. So there is some shortcomings. There's definitely has its pros and cons. <laughs> Boy, you're over the limit. Oh, nicely done. Full throttle with it being ice like that, it'll go down the 50, 60s on the dyno. Another little interesting tip, usually 10 degrees air temp, between one to one and a half percent power. So, heck, if we're knocking down uh, 50 degrees off that thing, five to seven and a half percent power at that kind of level, I mean, we're looking at almost 50 horsepower on that. Now, last time I was here, I almost got nailed. Yeah, there's a cop that sits up here in this little nook. Since we're in uh, Mexico, we have all points will travel. Yeah, I don't have my Mexican license, so yeah, neither do I. Can we get down first? Oh, if you can. See what first gear's like, that's I'm a little lit up. And they can even just walk into it or something. six times like no lie accidents we've gone into water we've gone into ditches you know, 360s and oncoming traffic a bunch of bad bad stuff so if, if you're a cat you have three more lives <laughs> you, know, right? you know you really should do like the hundred dollar uh you think, grabs, you think it's at that level you should do that I'd, yeah I'd, I'd i mean you got a power shift that give me a set of plugs yeah, yeah. <laughs> what i call it on instagram is poor man race motor i have five thousand dollars in everything oh no it's good so if I can get a year or two out of it, uh, and it, that's just a win right there. I believe Lund Racing made 1,189 horsepower on their factory boat stock, head bolted, everything was stock, just boosting fuel on their stock motors. That's that's why I went with this. So hopefully it pays off for me for a couple years. Dude, I can feel that spool. Yeah, it, it stops you as soon as you turn the wheel. It's like go kart life. Yep. Like backing into parking spots and you stall the car and you feel like you're new, but it's literally like the spool's like grabbing the brakes if you're not quick at the clutch. So we feel that like... Oh, well, you gotta be ready for the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so does it want to like naturally come that way or what is it? It, it never used to do that until it's power level. But okay, so but it wants to go that way? Or yeah. What? Okay. It's, it's, I probably could use a little driver tip there, buddy. Come on. <laughs> I like let you learn on the fly. <laughs> learn on the fly. See, I've been here really hard.
I'll take my friends for rides and like to get them to say like, all right, all right, all right. So it's usually like my my selling point. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I scared you. That's enough. Manual or automatic? That is the decision. Are you now tipping the scales? You're going almost full drag, or how much you're going to the track? That's kind of the deciding factor, really. Yeah, I mean, I go maybe six or times a year. I think driving the track and driving it from, it's eventually going to become a trailer car. It should probably, well, already be a trailer car, but I just have too much fun still driving it, so I just keep driving. All right, so this is interesting, though. Like. It is important to do an alignment here. All right, so like we got about a two finger at the knuckle. On the right hand side, we're right at three. All right, so it turns out on our test drive there, we were at 19 pounds of air on one side and 10 pounds of air on the other side. What did I ask you before you went? Will you hold on just a second, let me finish this? Come on. You're down as soon as you're like, oh, it's got 10 pounds of pressure. What are you doing, stupid? Stomping. Throwing his chest hair around. And honestly, the difference in when you were driving just to when I was driving, felt yeah. nine day different. Yeah, that's a little bit more contact patch right there. Yeah. But so, anyway. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks, man. So guys, check out Matt on his Instagram there. That's Modified Street 5 Slow. Guys, I don't often get to be able to drive a Mustang, let alone one that makes this much power, but that was a freaking blast. And this thing really does rip. It really makes that uh, 5.0 seem pretty, uh, pretty appealing, especially at that alleged forged 2019 motor, but this thing is absolutely certified sick. Guys, thanks so much for watching. God bless you, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Jeez. I just heard a teeth-to-teeth -teeth bang. I like your kind of cigar-looking bone there.